Welcome to module 3. In the module 2, what I did was I find for a fluid, what is the pressure at any point in the fluid. Okay, that information is helpful and I demonstrated a few applications in terms of using manometers, to find pressures at any place, etc. Again, that is very helpful. However, I am more interested in finding the forces on structures that are submerged. This is quite important for both mechanical as well as civil engineering disciplines. My approach will be a little bit different than uh, many of the books. That's something to note as well. Many of the books, what they do is they first approach the submerged structures as walls, and then they look at curved surfaces. So I'm gonna combine them together. I find the process a little bit longer, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Let's draw our curved surface like this. A completely arbitrary surface. Y is this way in module two, so let's be consistent with that, okay? Okay, this obviously indicates the free surface, which means that the pressure over here is atmospheric if you're using absolute terminology or zero gauge terminology. And I will talk about what if it is not in this module as well. Okay, so on this shape, let me tell you something. The pressure, one thing that we learned so far in module two is perpendicular to the surface. That's the first thing that I learned. The second thing is if I go in this direction or we call this X, we call this Y, we call this Z and this horizontal plane, it's not changing, okay? But if I go down or up, if I go up, it decreases. If I go down, it increases. And there's a lot of examples that I have covered. So I'm gonna basically using those two facts only. How the pressure varies in the fluid and perpendicular to the surface to obtain, okay? So if I wanna draw this, here's what's gonna look. Okay, it's perpendicular, it is perpendicular. It needs to go up a bit, right? Because I'm going more down, right? As I go down, I need to increase it. Again, it's like this, it's like that. You see, it's going more and more as I go down and down. And now obviously this pressure is continuous. It's not just the arrows that I draw. But if you wanna do, you can get something like this. Okay, so I will have like this. You see how complicated that is? That is the problem that I'm dealing with over here, okay? And at, at the end of the day though, there'll be only one force, a combined force, and we can call this, let's put it that way, let's call this FP, that's what I'm trying to find over here. Dimension into the screen is W. Width. I will separate this into two. And this is the approach that I'm going to take. And this is similar to many of the books. So then the components are going to look like this. One component will be pointing down and that will be in the FZ, right? So basically I'm just doing that. If I go up over here, then I will have this as well. And this will be FY. Note that the way that I defined, this is positive and FY is that way. So that's a negative. And Z is pointing up, yet mass FZ is pointing down. So something to note. So the combined force will be Fp will be equal to Fy in the negative j direction plus Fz in the negative k direction. Reminder, i is the unit vector in the x, j is the unit vector in the y, and k is the unit vector in the k directions. You can notice here that my combined Fp from the magnitude stand of point will be square root of Fy square plus Fc square square root. It's very similar to, similar to your statics courses anyways. Approach them one by one. Let me start by the easier one. And the easier one will be the vertical. So let's start by that. Vertical component of the pressure force and I abbreviated this as F sub Z. So now what I'm gonna do is I will attempt to redraw what I draw so wish me luck doesn't really matter but here's what it is and I have my free surface right over here okay it goes all the way to here vertical component of the pressure force 
is the weight of the fluid above the surface that I have. This is the one that I'm interested in. All the way to free surface. So basically, if I draw this, this is what it's going to be. So let's draw this in orange color. So I will get myself the weight of the fluid above the surface that I'm interested in all the way to the free surface. Let's call this y1, z1. Let's call this y2, z2. It kind of makes sense because if you think about a table and on top of a table, if I have a block of aluminum sitting on it, if I ask you what is the force on the table, it will be the weight of the aluminum block on the table. So this uses the exact same logic, except it is now, mathematically speaking, a little bit more involved. But it's still the fluid above it. One thing that I noticed from students, and I want to highlight right off the bat, is sometimes what happens is the students go from here to here, then they stop right over there and they, they kind of take this, this volume as the volume that they're interested in. Okay? So that's not quite right. The reason is that I have some liquid over here and that will also push it in, right? I will write it this way and we discussed this uh, multiple times so I'm not going to rehash it but this Fz will be the weight and the weight will be done by specific weight of the fluid in this one it's the orange one times the volume of the orange shape over here. Okay. And if I want to write this in terms of the integrals, then here is what's going to be like. It's going to be double integral because the third dimension into the page is W, specific weight times W. And let's call this dy dz. If you remember from mathematics, the first thing I do is I do this integral. So this integration limits for this one belongs to this dy. After I take care of it, I move on to the second one. This will be associated with the z1. So if I write the limits of it, this will be y1 to y2, then this will be z1 to z2. Okay, now here's the problem. All of a sudden this just got complicated, right? Look at the integral. I said that this is the e0 of the two, right? But one thing to remember is how often do you see this complicated shape in man-made structures? Not really. The most common geometries are much more simple than what I'm just illustrating over here. However, in nature, this may exist, so I would like you to take note of it. Okay? One more item that I want to discuss before I move on to the other component of the force is the free surface. In this particular case, the surface, the free surface is real. Okay? In some cases, and I will discuss those, what you will find out, and there may not be a real free surface. Okay, and so then the, the surface can be, let's put it, let's put a note over here. I said it's free surface, so this can be real, but it can be imaginary as well. So I would like you to just take a mental note for that at this point in time. I will revisit this when I'm solving a question. Okay, so let's move on to the horizontal component. So let's write over here, horizontal component of the pressure force and I said that this will be F sub Y right let me go ahead and redraw this figure for us something like this doesn't have to be exact that's not the point y1 comma z1 this is y2 comma z2 and this is my free surface what I need to do in this particular case I need to take a projection of this area Okay, so this area that I'm looking at, because there will be some force generated due to the existence of the fluid that is adjacent to my particular surface. This is a little bit more complicated to explain, and the derivation itself, our book, the Manson Yonkovichi 8th edition, doesn't go over it. If you really want to understand how to obtain this, it's more like taking a cross section. You may remember. From your salt mechanics when I take a a prime section right a a prime and what I do is when I cut it off I look at the forces generated over here so that's why I'm having this okay but the actual derivation of this component is fairly long and it's beyond the scope of an undergraduate class 
let's write here this will be the fy fy is the force exerted on the vertical projection vertical projected area in the negative y direction by the adjacent for the width okay so let's read it. fy is the force exerted on this vertically projected area in the negative y direction the way that i define my y and z right by the adjacent fluid so i have a fluid over here i'm cutting it off so i'm looking at what is the force over here so this is kind of interesting I said that this is the harder component because its explanation is harder. But I'll, I'll tell you a information that you're going to like. This force, as I'm only looking at this vertically projected area, this force is independent of this actual shape. So that's great. Okay? That's a huge advantage. So it's independent. Because I'm simply looking at, as long as the starting and the end points are the same, coordinate axes are the same, my horizontal component of the pressure force will be same. Okay, so let me write this over here so you'll see what I mean. So let's say that I have one and like just to highlight some height differences. And let's say I have uh, this surface, something like this. I have this surface and I have, let's say, a complicated surface like that. Okay. So this surface one, surface two, surface three will have the exact same horizontal component of the pressure force. So let's write it over here. This is important. All these three surfaces will have the same Fy. So this part is important. One thing that students kind of get that one because I'm showing something easier than what you need to deal with anyways. You may forget eh, that over here the surface area is equal to, I'm making this up, 1.5 meters square. This surface area over here is 1. Now let's say that this is longer, so I'm going to get, let's say, 1.75 meters square as my areas for all surface areas for the three cases. So what will be the area that I'm going to use when I, after I obtain my pressure, I multiply by the area? And then what will be the area that I need to use? Okay, so this is the mistake. You're going to use 1. You're not going to use 1.5. You're not going to use 1.75. So my surface can be this, but the actual number that I need to insert is right over here. So that's something that I would like you to be very careful about. One more item I would like to talk before I close off this segment is at the initial stage, I said that this whole pressure over here is 0 if I'm using H. If I'm using absolute, I said that this is going to be atmospheric, right? What if it's not? Let's say that my pressure is here is P2, right? Some other value. And this can be 100 kilopascal in gauge. It can be 5 psi in gauge. Or it can be 21 psia as an example, okay? Some other value. So what am I going to do in this particular case? Is this whole analysis going to be real changing? No, not really. So think about this. Let's go to the vertical component. I said that, hey, this is the vertical component of the pressure force is the weight of the fluid above the surface all the way to the free surface. But if I had another over here, what will happen is basically I will add the pressure times this. That will be the additional force on the surface over here. So it's not a huge issue. So as you see in the vertical component, what I do is I do P2 times horizontally projected area. I add to the total force. How about over here? It's the other way around, okay? Because you can see there's a P2 over here. As you know, the pressure here was zero and it's increasing, 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 right? So now it's not gonna be zero, it's gonna be P2. Increasing, 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 right? So then the whole thing over here will be P2 times this area needs to be added to the final calculation number. So it's not a huge change. But I wanna write it for consistency purposes. If the free surface has a pressure of, I call it P2 if I'm not mistaken, um, the effect 
will be to increase horizontal and vertical forces by P2 times vertically and horizontally projected areas respectively. So let's read it. If the free surface is a pressure of P2, the effect, let's put a comma, the effect will be to increase horizontal and vertical forces by P2 times vertically and horizontally. You notice in a horizontal force I'm multiplying by the vertical projected area and vice versa as well. Okay, so that's all I have to say about the uh, horizontal and vertical components of the pressure forces. I'm aware that at this point it's a really conceptual understanding. So I really need to go quite fast into solving some equations to illustrate how these concepts are translated into the real life application.